Hey guys, it's Key here from Kegland, and just want to talk to you briefly about our new Duotite push-in fittings. We've got a whole lot of push-in fittings which have just landed, and we've got a lot more to come as well in different types of threads and sizes. In the past, a lot of you guys have had to use these types of uh, hose barbs predominantly on a lot of fittings, and to be honest with you, it's what we generally used to recommend because they're one of the most reliable ways to make a hose join. You get the hose, you stretch it uh, over this barb, and then you use a hose clamp to secure it onto the fitting. The only problem with that is sometimes um, it can be a real pain. Definitely if you've got small internal beer lines, sometimes like the four millimeter ID, it's really hard to get onto some of the barb tails. And a lot of people like to use the four mil ID because it gives you a lot of flow resistance per meter, meaning that you don't have to have long, long lines inside your kegerator all coiled up. And you can get away with a much shorter piece to give you the same level of flow resistance. Anyway, uh, let's get into it and I'll show you how these push-in fittings differ from some of the other ones on the market. Now we do have the basic fittings like this, like uh, things like joiners and T pieces and stuff like that, um, and also in a couple different sizes. So these are the eight millimeter or five sixteenths, but also we're doing the uh, three eighths, which is another common size, both in the States. And also that's basically nine and a half millimeter in Australia. So we've got some uh, larger fittings as well and basically expanding the range. We also have um, some threaded fittings and these are, these are probably ones that uh, you'll see used in a lot of uh, home brewing and um, commercial beer applications. Firstly, the five eighths fitting, I'll show you how that one works. Um, so typically on the back of a tap shank, for instance, or for instance on a keg coupler, uh, you would use one of these uh, 5 8 ones. So yeah, you would just unscrew this instead of having to use that barb. Now the push-in fitting already includes uh, a seal under here, a washer under here, so you don't need to buy another washer. You just screw it on the back. And literally all you need to do is get the tubing, making sure that you've got a nice clean cut here. To be honest with you, I probably could have done a better job than that, but anyway. Now you've got to remember the tubing seals on the outside diameter here. So you've got to make sure there's, this, this is free of burrs and you don't have any, uh, any other you know, crap or other material on the outside of the line there. All you do is you push it in and there's a little bump stop at the back here. So you just push it in firmly until you hit that bump stop and that is literally all you need to do. So this same 5 8 fitting, uh, same one that also goes on to the uh, uh, onto the keg couplers. Pretty much all the keg couplers that we sell use 5 8 threads. There are a few odd ones, um, you know, in uh, mainly in Europe and some other countries where they use um, the half inch. But generally speaking, on all of our keg couplers, we use 5 8 on both the gas and the liquid output on the keg couplers. So yeah, you can use this one 5 8 uh, threaded bit on pretty much all the keg couplers that we sell. Now the other fitting that which is really common in the home brewing industry is this FFL fitting. So it's a female flare and that obviously screws onto the MFL fitting, the uh, male flare. So this is the same thread which we put onto our ball lock disconnects, uh, both the plastic ones in uh, liquid and gas and the stainless steel ones that you can see here. So literally all you do is just screw that on like so. And once you've got the fitting up, done up finger tight, you can actually use our five in one tap tool. Now pretty much anybody who has a draft system should have one of these in their toolkit. They're so handy and pretty much all the things on here are really useful. Uh, you'll notice on the hex on the, uh, on the FFL fitting here, we've got a larger hex, but actually there's a little small step down here. Uh, and actually this little slot in there will fit with that small step down. So literally just put it on there. And after you've done it finger tight, it doesn't need much extra, literally about maybe quarter of a turn like that and that's tight enough. You really don't need to over tighten it. You could possibly strip the threads if you go too tight. So yeah, just like quarter of a turn and then, you, and then you're all good. And then once you push the hose into the push-in fitting, the collet, which is this bit here and sits in all the push-in fittings, has got like stainless steel teeth. You can see four little stainless steel teeth in there and they grab onto the outside of the line and that's what holds the line into the push-in fitting really securely. So in order to uh, disengage or release the line from the push-in fitting, you need to pull the collet back you can do it with your fingers, but to be honest with you, we've got a seven in one tool, which was gonna be released soon, and that actually makes this job a lot easier. But yeah, pull the collet back like so, and then pull the line out, and it will come out like that. You will notice when the line does come out, you can actually, the stainless steel teeth can sometimes burr up the outside of the line. So if you've got some serious burrs on there, you might wanna chop off just the end, maybe half an inch or so, uh, before you use that in the push-in fitting again. As you know, with most of the regulators that we sell, these also have the MFL thread in there. So normally they would come with the barb and tail like that. However, because it's the same thread as the disconnect, yeah, you can also use the same MFL fitting on here as well. Once again, just screwing it in like that and fitting your hose in. 
Just to give you a bit of an idea of how well the duo tight fittings work, I've got a, a gas line here which is feeding 30 psi into this duo tight fitting which I've got on a gas ball lock disconnect. So I can submerge this underwater and you can see if I push the pin down in the ball lock disconnect, definitely there's, uh, there's a fair bit of gas pressure in there. And if I bend the hose, this is a real test of, of how well a uh, push-in fitting works. A lot of push-in fittings, they work okay, but as soon as you start to put a bit of deflection on the hose, then they start to leak. And if you look at this one, even if I bend this right over like that I'm not getting any leak or any bubbles out of there whatsoever so you can see even in really poor situations where you've got the line pushing or pulling in different directions I've got no leak whatsoever so that's a sign that with it, that, that double o-ring is really uh, doing its job one of the secrets to the duo tight fittings is the double o-ring seal if you look at one of our competitors fittings like this you can see internally in the fitting we've just got the single o-ring and as much as this works okay most of the time, sometimes if you've got a slight little burr or lines being pulled sideways, you can end up with this O-ring leaking and then you're losing gas or liquid out of your fitting. The duotite fittings on the other hand, if you look inside them, they've got a double O-ring seal. So this extra level of redundancy really makes the fitting far more reliable. We use high quality EPDM O-rings, which give a really fantastic seal, have a great chemical resistance, and they don't perish like a lot of cheap rubbers like butanol rubber and stuff like that. Double O-rings offer a level of redundancy in the system that's not offered in other push-in fittings. As well as sealing, the first O-ring here helps to align the tube, making sure the second O-ring seals really well. In addition to that, we have some redundancy in the system. So even if you have a little burr of plastic or something that comes in here or something on the external of the tube which gets pushed in, um, if that interrupts the seal on one of the O-rings, you know at the very least you've got one more O-ring here to keep you safe. Thanks for that guys. If you want to know any more about the new stuff that's coming up, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, or just join our Facebook group as well. Thanks guys. Bye.